smoking through it all, cause nothing in life lasts forever. Lasts forever. We don't want these hoes, don't want the fame, we want the cheddar. Yeah. Told her we can have it all if we do it together. You know I'ma pass the ball, but only to my brother. To my brother. You know I'ma pass the blunt, but only to my sister. I'ma pass the bottle, pass these hoes off to my niggas. For my It ain't exclusive if it ain't an Emlyn exclusive. It's your boy BQ, and welcome to the Low Key Facts Podcast. Uh, we're in the beautiful downtown San Jose, 408, Silicon Valley. You know what I'm saying? Even though we are biased, we represent the south side of San Jose, the real south. But um, we, shed, we shed a light to the whole city. Um, with that being said, I have a special uh, guest today. Uh, this individual has been... A part of my lifetime, you know what I'm saying? I've known this individual before Emlyn existed, before any of this stuff was in the makes. Uh, he was a, a young individual from the hood, you know what I'm saying? He grew up, and then he elevated his skills and his athleticism to break in and do uh, different doors, starting at Oak Grove, transitioning from Oak Grove. Oh, wait, don't get me wrong. I got the college name right here. Hold on. Don't get my notes. Hold on, hold on. Um, Boom. Right here. No, I, I, I got it already. Hold on. I got to redo it. So he came from South San Jose. Broke his way from... Started as a freshman on varsity at Oak Grove High School. Balling it out. Got an opportunity to play at uh, Holy Names University. Did I get it right? There you go. Holy Names University. And then slowly transitioning to the opportunity he's at now. Playing for the Oakland Roots as a professional athlete. And I have here Mr. Josiah Romero. Hello, sir. How you doing? <laughs> Glad to be here. Hell yeah, man. Good to have you here. It's crazy, man, because, like, you know, I got to give homage. I always got to give homage to the people from my section. So I always thought, you know, there's so many stories that exist in San Jose. I see from left and right, from athletes to rappers to business people that have so many impactful stories that I feel like we don't get to hear much about. Um, and I feel like they're worthy of listening to, and I'm glad we're able to bring you down so we can find out how you broke into this game. Because, you know, I, I, we grew up around some pretty solid athletes, you know what yeah, I mean, from sure. all different sports. Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you feel now that you're in this position and you kind of can reflect, you can look back into the timeline of where you went and you can be a person of influence, be a person of impact where you grew up? Yeah, I mean, I appreciate just everything, all the uh, ups and downs. You know, coming from San Jose, a single mother, you know. Oh, yeah, shout out to the single moms. Not exactly. So she helped me a lot. And, you know, there's a lot of, in the South Side of San Jose, a lot of homeboys, a lot of gang banging. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, it's crazy because when I was growing up, a lot of them were like, oh, like, you can't do that, but I'll still do it, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they kind of knew I had um, a lot of opportunities in the future. And so, you know, I just kind of stuck to it. And Oak Grove, for sure, was like a my platform I guess you can say going freshman to varsity mm -hmm. and then keep playing um but yeah that's where I kind of grew and then after that I was just sticking with the books and just you know school and soccer yeah um, a lot of friends I lost throughout the way because you know it's part of the journey exactly so I was, it was just me at the end of the day you know I would hit the weights you know weight room with uh was it Coach Braun? Yeah, Coach Braun. Yeah. Uh, what's the Ham? Was it Hamner or yeah, yeah. Hamner and uh, Stewart? Yeah. Uh, Coach Stewart, Stewart. I forgot. I, I, mm -hmm. It's been a long time, but yeah. he knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. So I would do that in the morning. Oh no, no, not in the morning. After school, and then after that, go home, eat, and then I uh, have practice and do it every single day. Um, so I went on the academy team, so dance sports academy mm -hmm. in San Jose too. Um, it's pretty high level for soccer. Um, so I got the opportunity to go there because I was with Santa Clara Sporting. It's like a little club team. Yeah, I'm familiar with Santa Clara yeah. Sporting. So I was on there first, and then um, we had like a little tournament. And then one of the Santa Clara University coaches like, came to watch one of my other friends. And I, was like, mm. I was like, oh, like, you better ball out today. And I balled out. Yeah, yeah. And so he was like, oh, like we need players for like academy level and stuff. So like basically he like kind of brought me in to the academy level. So is this like, after high school or is this before uh, college? Remember, I didn't play my senior year of high school. I, would go. I, only play, mm, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I don't play freshman, sophomore, junior year. Yeah, that's the thing too, bro. Is that like, cause, you know, there's so many directions I want to take this because it's, it's a lot to unpack. But, bro, you were a freshman on varsity, okay? Like, I know that's like, so it was like, all right, you know, we just made it happen. It's skill set, it, it made sense. But for someone outside in, they're like, they don't even get to touch varsity till their junior year. Exactly. So that's something that people don't understand is that you have to be playing at a high caliber to be embraced that way. Um, and then 
from there, uh, so you're saying your senior year, you went to play academy soccer. Yeah, so the way it works is with the academy, they're like really strict on it. So you basically have to sign a contract just saying you're only going to play with us only. Yeah, so yeah, that's you true. You can't play with anybody like, or any other teams. Yeah. And so that's why you couldn't play high school ball. I think that's so interesting about soccer is that the, the entry level to play the sport is really just the soccer ball. Yeah. But in America, like, it's very high competition, and you have to, like, you have to be able to invest a lot of money to be a participant in these academies unless they want you. Because then they're probably going to help you get in, in, in the program, I'm assuming, right? Not, sure. Not anyone can play in these programs, right? Nah, I mean, you have to be, you know, very... You, like, got, you got to have bars. Well. Yeah. Can't be no sucker. <laughs> you got to be actually skilled. Nah, yeah, but they also give, like, scholarships, too. And so for me, you know, my mom was hard for her to, like balance everything with work and you know, money and stuff mm -hmm. and so you know she made it work shout out to her Maybe yeah real shout out to her she always, you know, so how did that play out so did they give you a scholarship and then that uh, made you eligible for college because like i'm trying to understand like so uh, the academy scholarship it's like you got to pay a certain amount but if they'll help you with the scholarship it's kind of like deduct some of okay. it off. and so i would still pay a lot for me it was for us but, like for us it was a lot mm -hmm. you know because we travel every weekend like i'd be in vancouver one weekend i'll be in oregon one weekend and then you know la just yeah. and those are just games you yeah know, it's not even like a tournament mm -hmm. so we fly play games come back you know so it was like really it felt professional it, it was, sounds professional yeah, it really you're doing the like whole a, shit yeah so sound like the warriors <laughs> <laughs> not for real but it's just at a young age you know yeah like, so i was doing that and then that that really helped me out a lot you know because i didn't play high school ball no more and i was really like focused and a lot of people around me you know they were they went to like midi and like you know mm, but people mean, that were playing in the academy you're saying yes yeah, so yeah they, they, they had resources no, they had plugs sure. yeah. they were able to get in those places because of resources exactly that that speaks a lot so did you did you guys speak a lot of spanish in your household no no, no? Spanish, no. what's your ethnicity um, Mexican. I don't know, Mexican. Are you full Mexican? Yeah, I believe so. Hey. I'm probably something else. I don't know. Oh, really? I want to figure it out for sure. <laughs> He's like, I got to go on, uh, what's that What's that website called? Uh, Ancestry.com? Yeah, exactly. yeah, bro, I'm still trying to figure out my roots, too. Mm -hmm. um, so, your upbringing, bro, like, I feel like it's, it's, it's uh, for someone that doesn't understand, like, the levels of soccer, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like, they think it's pretty straight shot. Like, you went from high school mm -hmm. to college to where you're at now. But it was not like that at all. So do you yeah. feel like, is it really hard for someone to get in the position you're in right now? Uh, For sure. You just got to, you know, grind and just take every, like, opportunity as it comes and make the most of it, you know. So uh, I feel like for me, when I went, because, you know, with Academy D1, that was, like, my first thing. I was like, I want to go D1. And, like, yeah. There's no way, you know. But then, no, D1s are really hitting me up. And, like, UC Riverside only was like, oh, $1,000 scholarship. And back then, you know, I was like, yeah. oh, that, that's a big thing, you know? Yeah. I'm like, mom, it's $1,000. But then now, I'm like, $1,000 is nothing. Yeah, like, hell no, know, tuition add up. Exactly. And so, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, like, go to JC, you know? But then again, in my head, I was like, I don't want to be like, there's a lot of people that I know that are from San Jose, and they're like, yeah. oh, I'm going to just go to JC. It's still there. It's Till this day, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a system, you know, yeah. it's unfortunate. JC, I feel like, is good academically. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're just trying to get your general ed and you're trying to get your AA, it's a good program, you'll save money and you'll be able to get an opportunity to transfer to a four year after two years. Mm -hmm. But with athletics, it's a different story. Yeah, like, sure. the level of competition, the level of exposure, the resources, and the money that you have to invest to like, once you get to that level where you get to get looked at by a four year, mm -hmm. they're talking like, okay, your tuition for this year is going to be 30,000, 40,000. And yeah. some people don't even make that annually and their parents don't. So, uh, that's why, you know, having a scholarship was probably extremely important for you. Mm -hmm. Um, so how, what, how was it with your, with your academics was like, were you an academic achiever or did yeah. you struggle in school? I was, I was good. I was like 3.3. Oh shit. He said 3.3. Yeah, Make so me I look bad. Know, yeah, so I just you know stick to the books. Um, you know you can't really slack off because once you slack off, that's when you know the opportunities come. And if it's not there, then you know it's on you. So, but my SATs that was like the biggest thing, man. My SATs were low, <laughs> <laughs> and like my third try, I got like the score I wanted. But you know, so how many times does the average person take an SAT? I think well back then it was like you only get three tries. Oh, okay. And so the first two times they were like really really low, and I was like, damn, like. The last yeah, time better be it, pressure you know? adding up. So my mom paid for a tutor. My mom coming in clutching. Damn, money. bro. So, so so like, how did how did your mom balance out? You know, because 
Who was it just you? Do you have other siblings as well? Uh, yeah, so I'm the youngest. I okay. have my, like, my mom and my brother dad. Because my mom remarried, so she's okay. my stepdad. So mm-hmm. I was the youngest, and then my two sisters. Um, you might know Mariah and Ariana. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I'm the youngest and the only boy too. So yeah, always all that pressure. Exactly. So how did how how was that? Like, did you did you feel like she she pressured you a lot? Like in the sense of like encouraging you, motivating you, supporting you, or was it something that like you know you kind of had to do on your own? I don't feel like it was. It's not like she, she helped. She was there most yeah, of the way. Yeah, she was just making sure like I was in line because just like if things didn't go. Well, I guess how she wanted, or if she didn't like the things I was doing, she said, okay, then you're not going to play. I remember one time, uh, I got in trouble, and she was like, okay, you're going to sit out, like, the whole game. She told my coach. Oh, you're shit. Sit out, you know? Damn. Yeah. And so it was only for one half, but then I went in, and I tore it up. So, <laughs> so I got tore it up. I was yeah. going to say, I was like, you, you scored so, a goal still, though. Exactly. So she kind of knew what she was doing, and putting me in the right direction. She putting me in the right spot, you know? But I, I had to do a lot, you know, physically mentally on the field you know she just did a lot of things behind like yeah behind closed doors, so. it seems like it was a lot of uh, discipline mm-hmm. that was implemented sure. do you feel like you were like you were taught a lot of discipline through action or through a lot of like uh guidance do you feel like it was something that you had to kind of constantly practice or people were just leading you the way yeah she was for sure leading me the way but then i i like i knew what i wanted you know, mm-hmm. I wanted to play soccer and just do the best that I can, just go to college, you know, mm-hmm. and be the first one, because I'm the first one to graduate high school in time. Oh, the shit. first one to graduate college in general, first mm-hmm. generation, so. But yeah, so after, um, after high school, when I was telling you, I was thinking about going to JC, um, this D2, Williams University, like mm-hmm. one of my old coaches from when I was younger hit me up. He's like, oh, like, I just got this head coach job at Holy Name University, check it out, and I was like, uh, it's a, it's a yeah, yeah. School, like you know, I'm not sure. Mm. And I checked it out, and it said fifty thousand. I was like, oh, there's no way, you know. <laughs> it's and tight. Then, um, I uh, we went. I still remember to this day we went. And then um, you never been there, huh? No, nah, this I looked in the map though. It's like by Oakland though, right? Yeah, it's, it's like it's Hayward Oakland Hills. Basically. Okay, you know, and then you go down. Okay. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Is East Oakland type thing or like? Um, you go down. It's like. 10 minutes like international year international. okay yeah it's on 35th Ave. that's cool so um but yeah so i went and then honestly the biggest thing for me was like the view like the view, the view was like, popping like that the view is really really nice damn really sick. and then um he gave me an offer basically i don't like my uh my schooling academics was like paid for and all i just had to pay for was room and board which was like 14k just damn. like still a lot you know it is I mean? a lot but it's it's a lot compared to what you're getting though, exactly so my super, athletic super good. was like 30 something you know so it all worked out i had to just pull out some loans you know but i'm willing to sacrifice that rather than you know yeah that's a, that's a little sacrifice as opposed to like the mm-hmm. fifty thousand upfront type shit yeah me and my mom went half on it so, oh, she that even works out better, exactly. and and then now what you're doing now is making it up for all that yeah. investing, that sacrificing. Yeah, like sure. after you think of and you reflect about all the sacrifices that you went through, because mm-hmm. I feel like how old are you now? Uh, twenty two. You're still hella young as fuck, bro. Yeah, no. Like you're young as fuck, yeah. and that means that there's so much more for you to obtain. Like yeah. where where is your head now? Because I I feel like you're still that same hungry individual that I know since you were younger. Nah, yeah. So like what what is it that you're striving for now that you already in the position mm-hmm. that people dream of? So yeah. like what are you trying to do with it now? You know what I mean? I'm just trying to you know keep going and still like my biggest thing is like prove people wrong. Like, it's, you know I've always been underdog ever since I was younger. Like. Uh, smallest one on the field. You yeah, know, you were like, tiny, man. You were. Yeah, tiny. I was. was you did grow for sure. You, yeah. Y'all grew me and shit. I'm short. <laughs> I'm a short guy, but you know. <laughs> nah, that don't mean nothing. You know, yeah, as yeah. long as you you got the heart and you got the work ethic, that's all that matters. You know, and your mind's right. But nah, yeah, it's been keeping me just still hungry. And I um, being with Oakland Roots and stuff, I met a lot of like the pro athletes who have been at the highest level. You know, MLS, mm-hmm. um, USL Championship, which is kind of like big too, and. And just being around and being in that environment, it's like, dang, like, you know, I really can get used to this and hopefully mm-hmm. make a living off of it, you know? Oh, yeah. And just, it's cool because I'm like, I was the youngest, you know, I'm the youngest on the team. I was like, like I said, 22. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them are like 30s, or, you know. Like yeah, I was watching the videos. I was watching some of the highlights of uh, you on your content, on your page. I was looking at the age demographic and I was like, damn, like, you could tell, like, when you watch a professional uh, soccer game, you always yeah. get the age groups of like late 20s to like, 
early 30s. Yeah. 30s or new 20s. Yeah, you know, some some players actually try to max it out, you know, but like those are like legendary players that, you know, that go down. Um, but yeah, I can definitely tell the atmosphere and even the stadium was like filled. Like I'm like, these are actual filled crowd in the league too. Uh, so let me, I mean, let me break it down too. Cause I was doing my research on Oakland roots. Cause I want to understand like if it was the same league as MLS and it's not MLS, right? This is N I S A. Yeah. NISA. Yeah. NISA. Yeah. So like what teams do you play and like, what are some like competition in that league that you encountered? So we played the first game that we had when I came in was a uh, Chattanooga. So they're from like Tennessee, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we play LA Force, uh, Michigan FC. Um, where else? People in New York now. Um, yeah, there's a lot of others. It's like this, really but what's crazy about it is that it's the same thing of like a league where you got, you know, the front office, you got the whole team, you got the organization, you got your, yeah. it's the same exact system. It's just that it's, it's not at the forefront of like all the leagues, of course, because I feel like there's different levels to the soccer. You know what I mean? Sure. You got Premier League, you got International, yeah. you got MLS, mm-hmm. and there's so many more leagues. Yeah. Um, and they're still new. They're still like two years old yeah exactly that's what i learned about it started like in 2018 or 17 i think oakland roots started in 2018 19 right um and that's hella dope too because i feel like you know oakland has such a big culture Mm -hmm. um and i love oakland you know what i mean like i go out there to do pop-up shops i go out there to get food i go out there to do hella shit yeah it's so much fun shit to do out there and like the people are so like supportive and like they're just so like embracing of who you are so like when when you, when you meet people from Oakland, not just on the team, but like in the community, do they embrace you as a San Jose native, or do they bring you on as like you're our Oakland family now? You know yeah, what I mean? Like the Bay Area, basically. <clears throat> okay. Um, there's a lot of uh, guys that are from the area. Uh, one of my good friends, his name's Julio Cervantes. Mm. He's probably uh, one of the like, one of the first signers, I guess, or mm-hmm. close to it. He's dope. Like he's. He's a, he's a dope He's from San Jose, too, you said? Nah, he's from Oakland. Oh, he's from Oakland. Yeah. Got you. Bay Area yeah. native. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing, too, is that Oakland is, like, <clears throat> populated with Latinos and, and black folks. Like, black and brown is mm-hmm. is prevalent in that community. And I feel like bringing a soccer team to the city was one of the biggest things they could sure. have done. Not Warriors is gone. Not you know, and then the Warriors situation. And I even know they were trying to bring in a indoor arena football team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Marshawn Lynch and a few other partners were trying to bring in this oakland panthers Mm -hmm. right i think that was also in the works as well so did you get a chance are you talking about when you meet other professional athletes you said in mls do you also get associated with other uh teams in different sports in oakland too Um, or how does that work like because i know that you know your name is prevalent now in that city so how do you you know leverage that to get connected mm -hmm. i mean we we do a lot of things with the community and stuff help out um but no i don't think we haven't yet really I think last year they did with Oakland A's maybe a little bit, but mm. nah, nothing. That's cool. And yeah. you guys play, you guys practice on, uh, I know you guys play at Laney College. Laney College yeah. And Laney College right now is actually one of the last chance you yeah. uh, was featured uh, for Laney College. And it's dope because, you know, when people watch uh, football, kind of like how it starts, like last chance you was about junior college, right? Mm-hmm. They go to like Texas, they go to Florida, but over there they actually dorm their students yeah and, he and over here you gotta live like a regular citizen go rent a, car, and sleep yeah. in your car and you see yeah. the videos like they got people sleeping in their cars mm-hmm. it's a real ass grind mm-hmm. and uh you guys get to play so you guys do you meet any of the players from the team or you got encounter uh, anyone from the college well i mean the coach and stuff he'd be mm-hmm. wearing like the open roof stuff so yeah he'd be supporting us too and i know some of the players wear the open roof thing so uh yeah they're they're on board so that's all that matters and it's pretty cool that they let us use uh the field, you know, so we lay out like the turf. It's pretty mm-hmm. sick. Like the the first game that they had, it was five thousand six hundred and three mm-hmm. people there. So it was a lot of people. Yeah. I was I was looking at that. I was like, damn, they got this shit filled up. Yeah, like, this shit looked lit. It was cracking. Like once we scored and stuff. Like when I when I first like, walked on the field and stuff, I was like, there's no way. Like <laughs> you it's know, real. I was like, this about to be crazy. Yeah. You want me to break it down though? How I kind of yeah, you know, break it down, bro. I want I want to hear how you feel in the moment. Yeah, so I'll start off just how I start off with college. Yeah. So senior year, like I had a really good season. I had nine goals and like three assists. Yeah. I think so. I was doing doing like really really good. I got second team like all conference, um, and then I got player of the week like two times. 
I was going off, you know. I yeah, he's going. Off. I was looking at your career at Holy Names. I know you had 18 goals, so like you scored nine out of your senior out of the 18 you had. Yeah. Damn! So you was going off your senior year. Yeah, I was playing really well. Sheesh! Um, and supposedly, I guess at H and U, like I'm the second. Was it? Yeah, the second one, like second highest. In scoring? Yeah. So, so close good. to that one. Yeah, I know. Who, who was uh, before uh, you? Argentinian. Yeah, Ooh, I don't know. Argentinian yeah. folks, man. Messi. It's the yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but so after that, um, one of my good friends named Birdie, he mm-hmm. went to H&U. And like when I was there as a freshman, he like you know, he kind of showed me around. And, um, and then he got a job with like Oakland Roots and stuff. And so he was always just telling me, you know, try to get on. So they have like a second team. It's like mm-hmm. Project 510. Um, so like an MPSL amateur league. Mm-hmm. Um, so he was just telling me to get on that, and then um, they needed an extra player uh, for one of the scrimmages. Mm-hmm. And then I was going to San Jose actually too, mm-hmm. like to go see my my brother and my mom. Mm-hmm. And then he calls me. He's like, "Oh, like we need a uh, we need an extra like forward or player." And I was like, "You know what? Like, sorry, mom, I'm not coming." And yeah. So I like hit the U turn. Swerve and I was laying, got pulled over. Oh, uh, shit. Sure. Yeah, I got pulled over. I was, like, I was like, you know, you gotta let me go because I gotta make the bus and go yeah. in the back of it. And then, um, yeah, he didn't know who Oakland was. Yeah, he better just... know now. So, <laughs> you better know now. You better know now. Put some respect on it. Exactly. And then, so I pulled up and I made the bus on time. And then we went, played. I played really well. I scored a goal and I got an assist. And, you know, just fit in really well. And then they invited me. Um, for a week of like trial, you know, and I was there for a week, you know, just just trying to stay as hungry as I can, you know, I'm a young person. And you're saying this is the five ten project that you're referencing? Uh, to? Nah, so I was originally gonna go with the five one zero team, gotcha. but then they were like, oh, like we need extra forward, just like call somebody, and so they called me and I pulled up mm-hmm. and you know showcase. That was like, like your what, showcase, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, showcase what I had, and then you know they really like. Liked it really fast, you know, getting in behind. Mm-hmm. You haven't seen me play in a while. <laughs> yeah, it's been a minute. I, I was, like, looking at some content, though. I was like, I'm not surprised by what I see, you know what I mean? Yeah. So all the things that you've manifested, bro, it doesn't surprise me. You know what I mean? Like, I've always seen it in you. Like, even the fact that you were a freshman with the – it wasn't just the fact that you were a freshman kicking with senior, but it was, like, how relevant you made yourself mm-hmm. In that environment, being the little one, being the yeah. underdog, like you always kind of have this energy that I don't give a fuck, I'm gonna do me type shit. Exactly. Nah, yeah. So I was just like, you know, there was an opportunity, I had it, took it for what it's worth, and you know, and I went through preseason with them, and then uh, we had our first game, and then that's when I made my first pro debut for mm-hmm. like 20, 25 minutes. Man, the, the atmosphere was crazy. Like, it felt like FIFA. Yeah, it's just you like know? fucking, like, I'm like actually somebody, somebody was controlling doing, you and shit. Exactly, but nah, like, it was amazing, you know, and like that day, I was just like, you know, everything my mom did, everything that I sacrificed, all those late nights, you know, like, it was worth it, you know, and everything, you know, just, it was amazing. The so. best part is, too, is that you still get to be in the native Bay yeah, Area, no, you know what I mean? Like, home everything home. is still home. Yeah. If anything, you're just expanding your reach. Mm-hmm, for sure. That's all that's really coming down to. And the cool part is about the fact that you're working, playing in Oakland and the Laney College is 10 minutes away from Lake Merritt. You got yeah. any memories at Lake Merritt now that you've been making your, your presence known over there? Um, probably, what was it? Juneteenth, was it? Yeah, Juneteenth. Yeah, yep. it was cracking. It was yeah, that was like one like of the people. craziest times. It was like... Yeah. I went to Lake Merritt for the first time like uh, three, four weeks, was it four or five weeks ago? And fucking, I didn't even know they made their own parking lot in the center of the divider yeah. of the road. I'm like, yeah, damn, this thing is crazy popping. You know what yeah, I mean? They always be doing. Man, so crazy, fully, fully inspired. All the time. Yeah, and and they have their own things. You know, they manifested their own, their own shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, some other people I've seen... Um, at the Oakland Roots games are performers, like artists. And they had like Mr. Fab, they had the Grouch, they had Murs. Yeah. I'm like, bro, these are some real ass legends right here. Grouch, I fucking love the song Breathe. Murs' his whole album is just straight conscious hip hop. Mm. And then Mr. Fab is a legend. Um, so Oakland. you get a chance to meet these people or is it just uh, like they always want to fly, you just get to enjoy their music in the moment? Yeah, I mean... I've like seen them from afar. I mean, I met Mr. Fab a couple of times at Hyro Day, hey. like personally. Okay. And then um, that's what I was gonna say too. When I was at Juneteenth, he was doing a little like music video, and then I was just like walking right there, and he was had his Mustang. I was like, oh yeah, 
Yeah, like this is home, man. Exactly. This is this is my new atmosphere. Yeah, that's real. I love it out there, man. Like, um, and I noticed that recently you guys just did a pledge in June to uh to donate one percent of revenue and salary to social injustice. Um, and you guys are the first team in the league to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard. I mean, obviously you're part of the team. You probably have heard yeah. of this, but uh, like, what's what, what's your point of view on like you know how things are going on in the social climate, but knowing that your team. Is contribution contributing to a solution? Mm -hmm. Like, how, what's your stance on that? Nah, I mean, I'm behind them 110 percent. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a big statement. And I don't know if you've seen the the jerseys. Um, uh, I the think I did. They're tributes too, right? This yeah. is Black Lives Matter on them. Uh -huh. Yep. Oh, yeah. And it's like an infinity thing. It's pretty cool. That's so, sick. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, what they're doing, man, is really, really, really good. Um, I know the the justice match is about to be soon. They're gonna like mix different. People, that, I think they're bringing in some of the women's too. So mm -hmm. it should be cool. It's next weekend, mm -hmm. next on Saturday. Man, bro, it's so it's so crazy because it's been so many years since we've like talked to each other. But like, I've always know who you are, and you know, we've social always known. Media. You, social media keeps everyone connected still. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and you know, as I'm going through your social media, I'm just like literally going through your journey. You know what I mean? Like holy names, and then getting introduced to Oakland Roots and just seeing how San Jose's all embraced it, you know, yeah. seeing everyone from San Jose support you, like, how does that make you feel knowing that you people you grew up with, like, hey, Josiah's that guy, man, like, yeah, he nah, does his thing. Yeah, good, you know, like, just, uh, I gotta put on for the city, you know, like, yeah. I've been from the South Side, like, all my life, um, and I, every single picture, I don't know if you see, I put, like, San Jose, yeah, no, nah, I see product, it, you know every, I mean? so, everyone knows, like, you know what I mean, yeah. everyone from our section know who's who, you know what I mean, like, we have that, net, like, that, that, how you say that? That common connection, and people take pride from being from San Jose, you know? Nah, yeah, because not a lot of people like from the south, like you know, not doing, not doing. And, you know, I'm taking every. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What you yeah. do specifically is very niche. You know, yeah. like we do know a lot of people that did make their own journeys and did yeah. go through other limitations that they were able to break through um but with your path you know you wrote your own story you know what i mean your story is a little different because you're still around and you're still doing it yeah, um which is which is dope. A different city but you know. yeah exactly yeah. you know what i'm saying and uh graduated with a ba in business management business course management yes, and that's sir. that's dope right there you know what i mean because yeah. you could have just done communications you could have just nah. done some other shit but business management i think that was a really really important like um a uh, form of education mm -hmm. um because even the fact that you're working in sports, you're still learning stuff mm -hmm. in business management through your coaches, through your people in the front office. Right now, all this is like I'm making connections, like you know. What I mean? Exactly. Like, so when I get older, you know, who knows? I'm gonna create my own team. That's what I'm saying. Like I feel like you're in a great position to kind of connect those uh, those dots, yeah. and that you're conscious of those networks. Uh, and that's what I was gonna unpack earlier too, as well, because you mentioned that one of your old coaches from back in the day took the head coaching job at Holy Names University. Where did you meet? What team did you play for when you knew so, this guy? Uh, I played for a team in uh, Los Gatos. It was like PSA. Mm. Um, so my mom would drive all the way from the south all the way to Los Gatos to take me to practice all the time. Damn. And then, um, yeah, he was a coach there. Um, and he was still like younger too, playing uh, at a high level. He's, mm. he's like, he's saucy. Yeah, he nice. Yeah, he's hella nice. And he's a coach and he nice. Yeah, so that makes it even better. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. And so, you know, he, he knew me when I was younger. So when I was there, cool little story. Um, so there's like three people that they pick, you know, the best in the whole, like, uh, it's called PSA, the mm -hmm. club. They send to England for like a week. Yeah, they send to England for like a week. Um, and I was like one of the people to get chosen. And so like, they paid for my, or no. They, they get to go to England? Yeah, so they England send to yeah, send in England, so. Um, I just had to pay for like the flight and everything else was like good and so like I had a train of like some in England for like a week like the youth club mm -hmm. um, and so he was on the trip too and so like, I got to know him like a lot he got yeah to you meet, got to he got literally to yeah there. and you know it was a cool little connection so I, I feel like if it wasn't for like that um, little journey to England I don't know I don't think I would even got that opportunity that's crazy how life works huh you yeah. like you have a moment that you're just so grateful for and then in the long run you're like damn it was meant to happen mm -hmm. it was low-key destiny yeah you know what I mean do you ever feel like that like when stuff like that you connect the dots later on you're like damn like that shit was kind of weird how that happened because now I'm I'm here now because exactly. of what happened and it, if my mom would have never like put me in that like position in that team it's funny because like they didn't know who I was and I was trying to get on the team my mom like 
she's funny because she don't really like to, you know, boost me up. Yeah. But she was telling like one of the coaches, she was just like, I, like I guarantee you, like, he's gonna be one of the best players. Yeah. Damn. Shout out to moms, yeah. man. That's that's real support right there. Yeah, for sure. That's real support and, and being and being ten toes with the family. You know exactly. what I mean? Because those type of situations that are, 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 are hit or miss, you know, because yeah. I know exactly how it is. Like when people don't got that credibility, you know what I mean? Like, cause you were basically making a name for yourself. Mm -hmm. And, um, if you didn't have someone to vouch for you, it makes it really hard to kind of yeah. break through. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, bro, honestly, the reason why I wanted to unpack that, because I want to talk about how important networking is mm -hmm. because what you did right there was you were not necessarily networking. You were building a solid relationship with an individual genuinely. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you met someone and you, and you thought they were cool, you built a relationship and over time it became something bigger. And that's what I'm saying is that, you know, when you network with people, you, it's it's important to treat everyone the same. You know what I mean? And find the value in every single individual because everyone has value in their own way. And it's and if you can identify that and just be real with these people and find ways to give them value in the moment when it matters, they will give you that value in return. Mm -hmm. And that's where I feel like okay. what you just did right now was an illustration of that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but that's what's up, bro. I'm I'm happy for you with all this shit that we breaking down right now. Um, and so we captured on the, the records of, you know, 18 goals, eight assists in your college career. Uh, you know, you got your BA in business management. You, you went from the academy, from the academy to the Holy Names University. And uh, now you are where you at today. Um, and I know recently you were posting a Monday mobility post. So yeah. I'm curious to ask you, do you do yoga, my friend? Is that something you do now? Uh, I mean, I stress. <laughs> is, that, is that considered yoga? I don't know if it is. It looked like yoga. That's why I was yeah. like, do you do yoga? <laughs> nah, so it's like mobility. So I got to, you know, make sure your muscles are... Yeah, free. so what does that do? Like those exercises that you do, like what are those like um, designed for? Basically getting loose because your muscles get tight, you know. You Hell yeah. a lot of minutes and stuff. And so you're going to... If you get tight, it's a lot of chance of like injury. It's the fucking hang hamstring injuries, bro. Nah, yeah. My failure your right glutes, there. Your glutes are tight. That's why. Booty cheeks ain't tight. So, <laughs> so yeah. the people that I, I met recently... Um, Niall, he plays on the team as well, and then Gina, uh, it's her, his wife, mm -hmm. and so she like owns her own gym and stuff, and so like they kind of put me on with that too. So I'd be, I see. I be like going live every morning. Shout out to Facebook. Hey. So I be going live every morning and doing a workout. Um, since you know pandemic and stuff, we can't have classes. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I be just putting in work all the time, and they help me, you know, just kind of stay on my grind. Stay, stay on your grind. No, exactly, and so. With that, she kind of teaches me like you have to stretch. You have after you have to pull down, you know. But like, that's most important because if you don't, you're gonna get injured. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, coaches he's always say you gotta, you gotta stretch. You gotta stretch. You know, stretch. Sure. That shit fucks you up. If you don't. I learned the hard way. Yeah, and a lot of the stuff they do is like injury prevention. Yeah. So it like you know I'm working out basically every single every single day, just trying to stay fit. And yeah, so that, that's been keeping me. Solid, tip top shape. So one question before we transition to a subject about San Jose. When it comes to Oakland, what's the top food spot in your in your list right now? Like where are you going to get food if you have the choice? Like you just okay, got a so, big check, you're like, but I wanna splurge on some food today. Like. Yeah, so recently yesterday actually I had a Emory and Jones. It's called Emory and Jones? Let me look it up. You said let me look it up. What what they what they, what they serving over there? I need to know. Put me on. Basically. It's in uh, Jack London Square. Okay. And so, familiar. Um, yeah, I went there yesterday. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they had short ribs. Uh, yeah, they're hella good. You just said ribs caught my attention. Yeah. I've been ribs. craving ribs, bro. I haven't touched ribs in hella long. <clears throat> Me either. I'm not really like, I mean, I like barbecue, but you know. And then I ate. I ate. I was like, oh, yeah. I had to get two. Two to go. <laughs> <laughs> Get one for now, one for later. <laughs> exactly. All right, that's good to know. Y'all know now. So it's called em Emron Jones. Yeah. And what's the other one? Emron Jones or LNS. It's I heard LNS. I'm sleeping on LNS. Hey, LNS is smacking. I heard about LNS. Oh, my dog Isaac's in the building. It's my boy, uh, Josiah. Josiah, this is my boy, Isaac. He does a podcast too, okay. PMO podcast. You might have to hop in his too next time. Yeah. Um, so I got a segment right here. This is something I'm experimenting with. All right. So yeah. you gonna run this experiment with me? Okay. This segment is called, Are You From San Jose? And I have a question, and you have to try to answer it at the best of your knowledge. Right. And if you don't know the answer, then I'm just going to hit a little meh or some bullshit. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. All right. What's the name of the venue where Chris Brown got shot at? 
I just know it's in the cemetery. <laughs> hey, you ain't wrong about that. I remember he said. Thank you remember? It in over oh, there. he said they gave me it in over there. That shit went viral, and everyone never, you know, gave credit to that being from San Jose. But that was actually uh, El Rancho, I think it was yeah, called. El Rancho, yeah. El Rancho. That was the spot. They used to have like crazy fucking banda right sessions over there, and all that crazy shit. Uh, Bay Area anthems like SF Anthem, Super High Feet, On Sita's Sideshow were produced by a San Jose producer. Who was that? You know those songs, though, right? Yeah. San Fran. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah bro. That's Tracks a Million right Tracks there. Million. Tracks a Million. Tracks a Million. See, the thing is that when I did this experiment, I was like, okay, I'm not going to make them too hard, but yeah. I'm going to make them like, okay, these are pretty self-sufficient. You know yeah, what I'm saying? But, sure. Yeah, bro. Uh, well, you, you heard it here, man. We, we were able to kind of unpack some of these things. Um, but now that we're uh, slowly transitioning into like the conclusion, I want to give you an opportunity to talk directly to the audience for an individual who might be in your position. Like when, you know, when you were a freshman in high school mm -hmm. and they had the same aspirations as you. And it's crazy because I'm, I'm asking you a question like this, but you were literally like a couple years away from being there. So yeah. what do you have? What advice do you have for someone that's trying to be in a position like you or further? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like in my age when I was in high school, you just got to really stick to the books, stay on your grind and, you know, get the SAT score in because that's mm -hmm. really important. And then once you get in the... You gotta contact college coaches. That's the most important thing too. Um, film, films like everything too. Film, yeah. like 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 your own highlight film type shit. Yeah, for sure. Like, you know, when you play games against different opponents, you want to make sure you hopefully film the games. Yeah. You know, so you have because if it's a school that you want to go to, like in a different state or something, you can just be like, oh, here's my film. Here's my name. You know what I mean? Let me know what you think. Yeah. So. Yeah, just make sure you have film. Contact a lot of college coaches. Because, you know, me, I, I didn't, everything was like, it was first time, you know. I'm yeah, like, yeah, I'm exactly. I'm educated on everything. Just of a lot course. of people were helping me out. Trial and error. Exactly. So, um, yeah, contact the college coaches. And then once you're in, um, keep those grades up. Um, don't be slipping. There's a lot of resources in colleges for sure. Uh, like writing studio, um, what else? Tutors, you know. Um, I mean, I didn't really have a problem with school at all you know mm -hmm. if i did like uh kind of was messing up don't be afraid to ask for help either yeah you know what i mean like there's help out there <laughs> yeah period there's help from every direction you just gotta ask exactly and you know that's on the schooling but with soccer you know just keep just keep grinding try to get on the i would say for sure just try to get on the teams like out here santa clara sporting is good the academy san jose earthquakes academy uh, the answer force academy where i was at among my um, yeah, if you can, just try out for the team, you know, and just keep, just keep practicing, keep grinding. Um, and then once you're in college, uh, just try to do the best you can. I feel like it was hard, you know, like D2 person going like professional. Not a lot of people do that, mm -hmm. especially in our like uh, little league and stuff. I feel like with all sports, you know what I mean? Like yeah, with exactly. football, soccer, like if you're D2 trying to go into the league, it's, it's hard, you know what I mean? Not for sure. You just got to have the right like connections. You know, so you got to network like you were talking about. Um, but, yeah, that's basically it. Just, you got to just keep playing, though. For soccer, you have to just keep practicing, try to play as many games as you can. It, I feel like it's a different, it's different from football. Yeah, know? for sure. Like, it is, for sure. Different fitness, different techniques, you know. Like, you just got to be on the field and just try to play. You got to stay fit, you know, because mm -hmm. you're not fit. Yeah, it can look tight. <laughs> yeah, you can be, you know, really technical, but if you can't run, you don't have lungs, and it's a wrap. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm always a, a person to go to, you know. Mm -hmm. if anybody hits you up, a young, you know, yeah. if they need help, guidance, I'm always here. So. You heard it here, folks. You got to tap in with my dog, Josiah. Yes, sir. Any input, any direction, any sense of guidance, feel free to shoot the DM. Um, but... Yeah, bro. I mean, right now, I guess the uh, last thing I wanted you to get a chance to say to the camera is just like, what's your message to the folks in San Jose? Uh, like, what are some things that they should anticipate coming from you and the Oakland roots? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, man, what's good? Uh, just, you know, still stay connected with me. Um, still stay with me on the journey. And Oakland roots, you know, it's going to be growing soon for sure. Like, it's, you know, it's still big, big part of Oakland. Um, there's, you know, there's a lot of good things going to be coming in, what is it, 2021 now? Yep. Yeah, so, so the season got uh, pushed to 2021 now? Or uh, 2020? Nah, nah. so it's going to be 
soon in like late September, but okay. like I say there's a lot of like in the works. Oh the damn, the games are coming up, coming up. Yeah. So. Oh shit, you guys already got the whole schedule figured out, or yeah. How basically. many until how long is the season? Um, basically, like November, December, I mean. Okay. Yeah. That's when it ends. You're saying it'll start in September, end there's in November, like, or it's kind of like the NBA. You only get like a certain amount of games. You know, okay. The whole. Yeah, whole yeah, 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 yeah. So. Makes sense. Yeah. That's cool. Are you excited? You, you you plan on doing something new this season, or like yeah. breaking like breaking some serious numbers, or taking over a starting position, or you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, what, what's just, you know, it's hard. There's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know, in my there's a lot of forwards. There's a lot of goal scorers. You know, so it's just you got to compete every single day. Like that, that's the thing. You know, it's like a job now. Yeah. So you got to come out and you know every day is contract day. You know, because they can cut you whenever. Damn. So that's just how it is. You it's know? cutthroat. Exactly. So, damn. You gotta have your options open regardless. But you know, they like I appreciate them a lot because you know not a lot of people would be willing to let me in and um, you know just show showcase what I got. So mm -hmm. forever get grateful like for them for sure. So no matter what. And the youngest player on the team, man, putting it on for the San Jose City. One, one kid, too, from San Jose. Oh, yeah. I should, yeah. I should link you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put me on. What's his name? Uh, his name's Ariel. Ariel. Mm -hmm. Did he go to school? Uh, yeah, he's a prospect, though. He's from San Jose. Oh, okay. I got I to gotta do my research. You put yeah. me on an individual named Ariel. I'm, I'm on the lookout for you now, son. I'm on the lookout for you. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your business schedule to come down here. Um, and you already let the audience know what's up. So anticipate this, the season coming in September. Need y'all to support, stream, because, you know, yeah. people aren't, aren't going to be in attendance. So stream, watch from a distance, uh, buy some merchandise because they got some sick-ass yeah. apparel. Uh, and then on their website, they just dropped a new embroidered piece I see with the tree. Yeah. I'm going to have to make my little small investment myself because yeah, I should. Let me know. I'll, see what I get. I'll give you the cash right now, bro. Cash, <laughs> you take cash app, no <laughs> shit. And I seen G Easy in a music video with Tiger wearing that shit too. Uh, yeah. So Damian you guys, born Damian Lillard too. Oh yeah, and Damian Lillard. Yeah. yeah. So the same way, Oakland is supporting the all all different levels of shit. That's how San Jose gotta be. So yeah, exactly. We 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 inspired. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Um, you rocking the M and stuff. Oh, yeah, you are, bro. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I got the whole inventory outside. You know what I mean? We finna get you right. Um, but yeah, man. So you heard it here, folks. Uh, you heard it here, folks. We got a South Side individual in the building uh, supporting the whole city and uplifting everything that goes along with it. Uh, I do, like I said, I do appreciate your time. And uh, for the folks in San Jose, make sure y'all stay tuned. And uh, we're going to conclude it at that. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Cause nothing in life lasts forever. Nothing lasts forever. We don't want these hoes, don't want the fame, we want the cheddar. Yeah. Told her we can have it all if we do it together. You know I'ma pass the ball, but only to my brother. Only to my brother. You know I'ma pass the blunt, but only to my sister. Only to my